And welcome back to the show. Tom Jagger grew up in a small town in Illinois and became one of the biggest names in swimming. In a match race broadcast on national TV in 1990, Jagger was the first man to swim under 22 seconds in the 50, first swimming at 21.98 in the semifinals, then at 21.81 in the final. And that 21.81 stood up for 10 years as the fastest time. And more than 18 years later now, Jagger's the head swimming coach at the University of Idaho. And Tom joins us now on Skype. Tom Jagger, welcome to the Morning Swim Show. Well, thanks, Peter. It's great to be here. Beautiful day out here in, uh, on the Palouse uh, in Moscow, Idaho. You look the exact same as you did 18 years ago. Uh, I don't feel the same. I wish I did. Uh, do you think a record, a world record, will ever hold up for 10 years again? Well, yeah, I mean, I think we go through these, these cycles and times where they, uh, you know, get, there's, a, there's a huge decrease, kind of like what we're having now, you know, maybe we go down to 20.7 and, and then maybe it sits there for 10 years or so before it goes down to 20 flat or 19.9 in the long course. So uh, I think if you look through the world records uh, in all the different events, you'll see that there's, there's kind of those times, it took a long time for people to beat Janet Evans' record. Uh, and so I, there's going to be these cycles where it kind of holds stagnant for a while, I believe. Over the weekend, as you know, Fred Bousquet broke uh, 21 seconds. What were your impressions hearing and, and watching that race? Well, it's amazing. If, if you don't mind me looking up at the camera here a little bit, it's the first time I've seen it. Uh, obviously, a great start right there. Uh, I've heard about it, uh, just hadn't seen it. Um, you know, in, in some ways it doesn't surprise me because uh, once you get on a roll, once you get riding that water so fast, uh, then, you know, it can happen. And there's another guy, that uh, Bernard, but he was, had to been close too. Um, but to break that time, that's, I don't think it's that unusual. I, I guess I was asked uh, last night, you know, is this, can you believe they're going that fast? And, you know, yeah, I can believe they're going that fast. These guys are, they're, for, you know, when I first started with Matt Biondi and, and Steve Crocker, we first started doing the 50, there wasn't a lot of emphasis on the long course 50. We had great coaches, Ray Buzzard and uh, Ron Balatori working on the short course 50 and recruiting athletes that could go a short course 50. But they didn't put the 50 in the Olympics until 1988. And so we're 20 years from the time where it actually becomes a recognized event, and that's a lot of time to be... Uh, it takes that much time to start focusing on this one race, which is very technical. Uh, it's certainly not as easy as people think it is. You know, I grew up in the era that, oh, anybody can swim a 50, and fortunately I made a living beating people who thought anybody could swim a 50. And, uh, you know, so now they're, they're specifically training for this event. Obviously they're still training for the 100 and the 200 to get the endurance, but that focus on this one lap, uh, it doesn't surprise me that those times go. And, and I guess that leads me into what I was saying earlier, is that these times will go down, we'll have a, and then now something else will have to happen in order to get them down to 20.1 or 20.2. Uh, you know, they're going to have to study what these guys are doing currently today that's different from what we were doing uh, 20 years ago. Is it more difficult to train for the 50-yard short course or the 50-meter long course? Well, they're different events. Uh, the short course, you have to have, you've got to be much more explosive. So you have to be in the weight room a lot more. Uh, you've got to be uh, a lot of fast twitch, everything, uh, ankles, knees, hips, uh, neck, everything has to be uh, very explosive and very, very finely tuned. Now you need that for the long course, but for the long course, you need to be a better swimmer. And, and that's really the separation uh, throughout all the events uh, between short course and long course. You know, short course, you've got to be a great turner, great uh, starter. Uh, long course, you need to be able to swim. And, and that's what gives the advantage, at least early on, when uh, gave the advantage to somebody like Matt or myself, uh, because we had a great background in swimming. We grew up in the, in the 70s where we swam a lot of yardage. Uh, and so that translated to a better swimmer, a better uh, long course, 50 meter swimmer. Um, so I think with, you know they're starting to combine that. Great starts. You know, before I started swimming the 50, nobody was really working on their starts. So then that helped change it. Now they now they're putting the whole package together. Everybody, every generation adds their own influence 
and their own focus to the 50, which makes it better and better. Do you utilize a lot of long course training with your swimmers up there at Idaho? Well, we wish we could. We don't have a 50 meter pool. Uh, and I, because of that, I, I also believe I didn't use a lot of long course training when I was swimming and training in my career. Uh, it was not, back in those days, we didn't have that many pools, and so it was not a huge. Nobody said, oh my gosh, it's a negative, we don't have long course. Uh, so even in my own career, I didn't train long course that much. Uh, but that's not the discount. I, you, training in long course helps you lengthen that stroke out. It helps you, uh, just gives you more swimming uh, power. Uh, and so there's benefits to long course training for sure. Uh, we just don't do that much of it up here, and I haven't had that much uh, in my own career. Well, what was your draw to Idaho? I mean, I, a lot of people don't even know about Idaho's swimming program. I mean, why did you go there, and uh, what are you trying to accomplish there? Well, first of all, we have a great university up here in northern Idaho. Uh, so education is obviously important. The biggest thing I did in my swimming career was get my degree. And uh, so I, I'm in an institution that has uh, a great scholastics, and I'm in an athletic department that believes that academics comes first. And so we're at a, at a very good university here at the University of Idaho. Second, if you know, for those people who know me and, and know kind of what I'm all about, I'm in the middle of some of the best outdoor recreation in the world. People come from all over the world to raft these rivers. They come all over the world to fish these rivers and to hike in these mountains around here. So for me and my family, we're in heaven. Uh, you know, all summer we spend out on the rivers fishing, uh, hiking, backpacking, mountain biking, uh, and in the winter we ski all winter. So, uh, well, I shouldn't say we, I watch them ski, so, which is kind of nice. But uh, you know, you, it's the best of all worlds to have a university up here in the middle of just this outdoor uh, area that you can do anything you want outdoors and have it be the, the highest quality. Uh, you know, in, this, in the winter when we ski, we don't stand in lines. We ski up, we ski beautiful terrain, I might back down and get on a chairlift, and so we have a we have a pretty lucky up here in Idaho. Get ready to get ready to explore the great outdoors is what you're saying. Oh yeah, this is this is the best of the best. You can't find a better spot than uh, than the state of Idaho or the University of Idaho to to get out into the open.